All right, uh, thank you everybody for coming to our club meeting. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, so by way of, so we have a few announcements today. Um, one, thank you for everybody who came to B-Sides. I know Aaron did, and your team actually won the CTF challenge. So, yay, yay. <laughs> yeah, Aaron. Um, I hope you're enjoying your Wi-Fi pineapple. I haven't even gotten to like play around with it all. I've been so busy. Uh, you're gonna love it until you start breaking. playing with it. Um, also, uh, we have some really neat meetings coming up in April. Uh, the first one's on April 5th, or the first one for that month. We have some cool, good guest speakers coming uh, that we met at B-Sides in Salt Lake City. Um, we have Jake Jones coming. He works for the National Guard. He's also bringing two members of his computer network defense team to come talk to us, which is going to be great. So don't miss that meeting. Um, as well, we're going to have some CTF training meetings starting uh, next week. So look on the calendar for those. Those will be on the calendar as well. Um, today, we're going to be talking about Nmap. Um, how many of you have used Nmap before? somewhat okay that's fine um, so we're gonna go from the base up okay since not everybody's used in map so we're just gonna start right at the basics of it um, to get started let's watch this uh, let's watch a video to kind of give us an idea of what in map is This episode of Hack Tip is brought to you by FreshBooks. Welcome to Hack Tip, the show where we break down concepts, tools, and techniques for hackers, gurus, and IT ninjas. I'm Shannon Morrison. Today, I'm introducing a new tool for like minds called Nmap. Nmap is short for Network Mapper. It's a free and open source utility for net security audits and network discovery. It's been around since around 1997 or so, but it hasn't changed too much, but it's still kept up to date by its user community. Now, Nmap is available for a variety of platforms, and the most popular, of course, being Linux. Over the course of my Nmap series, I'll introduce concepts such as using it for host discovery, which is basically identifying hosts on a network, port scanning, version detection, OS detection, and scriptical interactions with a target. Now, that's the funnest part. Nmap can also give you info on DNS names, device types, MAC addresses, and even more. It's usually used for auditing the security of a device or identifying open ports or network inventory, and you can also use it to identify new servers as well. Of course, Nmap, just like any other tool out there, can be used for black or white hat hacking, and is widely used strictly for systems administration. So let's take a look at how to download and install Nmap as well as your first scan. But first, let's take a quick break. FreshBooks is the simple online accounting solution built for small business back, and now we are ready to download Nmap. So, sudo app get install Nmap. Very easy. And I'll have the link in the show notes okay, for you guys. Now, if you also have Kali Linux, it's already installed, so you're ready to go. Oh, yeah. I love Kali Linux, it's so wonderful. Now, to start using Nmap to scan a single target, just one computer or one server, you can type in this syntax. It goes Nmap and your target. So for my example, I'm going to scan my Synology NAS so that my command would look like this. It's going to type in, I'm going to type in Nmap, and then whatever the IP address is of the Synology. 73.31. 74. So when I hit scan, it's going to start the actual scan. This scan is going to show you the status of different ports detected. So you're going to th see three different columns whenever you check this out. First off is port, this first column. The second one is called state, and that says open. And the service is the last column over here. And we see things like FTP, HTTP, NetBIOS, SSN, and that's very popular, that one. So in this first column, we have the list of ports. And this is going to show you the port number that certain services are running on and what protocol they are using. So we see that port 21 has a protocol called TCP running on it. Now the state is the status of the service. 
and then the service is the software that is running on that server. I know server, services, sometimes services or servers. It gets a little confusing, but bear with me. So on here, we see that the different kind of software that we are using on this server include FTP, HTTP, there's a printer on it, something that's unknown, Postgres SQL. Hmm, that could be interesting. So the state also, I should mention, this can be open, closed, filtered, unfiltered, open and filtered, or closed and filtered. Now, paying attention to what processes are running on your servers are often, they can be really crucial to keeping your network very secure. More on that later as we discuss finding a printer and then discovering that Telnet is open on it. Hmm, that's fun. So, what would you like to see next on Nmap? There's a lot of very interesting things you can do with it. I can also use it with Netcat to do a series of different commands. It's very interesting and I'm very excited to check it out myself. Send me a comment below as usual, or you can email us at tips at hack5.org. And be sure to check out our sister show, Hack5, for more great stuff just like this and some fun with SDR radios. I'll be there reminding you to trust your TechnoWest. All right, great. Um, all right, let's jump into Nmap then. Um, okay, I'm going to boot up a target for us to. Uh, to play with, you know, and let's see. All right, so everybody has in map installed on their computers. Um, so I want everybody to type in man in map on their computers, okay? Uh, I want you guys to look through uh, some things that in map can do. Um, is your Kali Linux done downloading? No, I think uh, Okay. Once it's done, just let Aaron know and he'll help you. All right, so can somebody tell me a few different kinds of scans that we can do? Um, well, don't look at my screen, but. What are Cats. a few? What? Cat scan? Uh huh. What's another one? Stealth. Stealth. Okay, that's a good one. Okay, there's another one that's really simple that I like King scan. You know, it's a good way to see if it's actually out. Not always effective. It might, it might be blocking pings, but generally it's a good one to go with. Um, there's also a intense scan, I believe it's called. Fast scan. Oh, okay, yeah. This syntax right here is really important. Okay. The dash O, I believe. Yeah. The dash O is used for OS detection. I put that on every time I run in that, I do that. Because that's really important to figure out what exactly you're dealing with. Whether it be a Windows machine, a Kali Linux machine. Uh, All right, for now, let's go ahead and target the machine I'm using right now, okay? So get, let's see what we can find. Okay, this is my IP address right there, 10.0.2.15. So type in nmap, and then you don't do, it, don't do any syntax for now, just nmap and then type that in. Let's see what we get, you guys get. You say that is, that's a Cali box. Is this on your 
Dolly machine or whatever. Yeah, that this IP right uh, that you just saw is is uh, my machine, my the target machine that I set up is coming online. Okay, actually, sorry guys, we're gonna be targeting this one. Um, two dot. Actually, same one. Never mind. Interesting. Yeah. 10.0.2.15. Now, Aaron, why is my uh, IP for my Kali Linux box and my target the same? So your target box is a different virtual machine? Uh-huh. You think I... I, I think they might both be unbridged. Maybe. Could be a problem. But 10.0 is a weird IP address for bridged. I'm not sure. I think that would give you a UUIP address when you were bridged. Yeah. True. All right, we're fine. Okay. So go ahead and type in nmap 10.0.2.15. Perfect, so we can see it's up. run. Let's go ahead and run a there. I should be able to ping it from are you be able to? What's your IP over there? Uh, got. One seven two dot one six dot five zero dot three four. Okay, so weird. you must be on a different network. Yeah, because okay. one six one is UVU. Yeah, you know what it is? It's probably this my network cable up here. Yeah, it's weird. Usually the gray ones are the ones you want. Okay, I'm gonna I'm moving to the gray one actually. I think that's okay. So I think I'm the problem. So I'm gonna move over I to the gray so. one. I'm gonna see what I get on this one. Because usually UVU's IP addresses are one six one unless I set this up on some weird environment. Sorry about that. I I think I started out on the wrong adapter. Okay. All right. Let me boot back up. All right. Is your Kali done? Okay. Go ahead and extract it. Um, Aaron will help you. No, you're fine. 
Yeah. What's your IP address? I think I have a big. I What is it? One seven two. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, that's it. Okay, you're good. So I'm on the right network. Yeah, you are. I was on the wrong network. So what's your IP address now? Okay. Same. Okay. And you're getting one seven two. I guess this. Let me check again. I need to make sure we're on the right network, otherwise you're not going to be able to reach my IP. This is going to defeat the purpose. Aaron, should I be in NAT or bridged? That's a problem. Yeah, I'm expecting to see 172, right? Yeah. So that's what we're looking at. Now the question is, are you running? Unless maybe the teacher stations are on a different network? No, I just I just plugged in the cable from the student computer, the gray cable. Oh. I got I stole one from the computer in front of me. Okay, here let's check. Oh, there we go. Okay, we're good. All right. Um, my tally box isn't, but the uh, our target machine is good. We just switch to scale. Yep. So Aaron's gonna write that down. Switch the view to full screen. Uh, here. Sorry for that. I do not off the top of my head now. So is there a way that that machine can tell if we are looking at it? Yeah. Um, well, not very easily. It depends on what you're doing. But um, I can look for suspicious activity. We'll go into that in a second. There we are. Okay, our target is ready. Okay, so the IP is written down up on this whiteboard, so we're gonna try out a few different scans on this to figure out what this machine is um, 
without looking at the process list, but um, you want to figure out if there's any vulnerabilities as well, okay? Hint, there probably are, okay? Um, so go ahead, type in nmap and then this host. Let's see what uh, output we get. One seven two dot sixteen dot fifty dot thirty five. I believe so. Oh. Okay. What do you okay? I don't know. Running something. All right, you have it. You do the enough scanning of it. Type in the dash O this time. Tell me what you get. Yeah. All right. So we determined that this is running Linux. Where, where does it say? Says Linux, but no, 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 you did it right. Yeah. Okay, so we determined from the scan that it's running Linux 2.6. Did you figure that out? Okay. So, what are some other arguments that we can do to get more information on what this host is and what it's running? Any ideas? Let's take a look at the man page. Okay. There's more intensive scans that we can run. It's like SV, little s with a big V is service slash version detection. Okay, let's try that. S, little v. No. Oh wait, oh, my bad. Or little s, big v. Little s, so in, map, little s, big, little s, big v. Yeah. And then the, the, the server, so dot 35, okay. Give that a shot. What was your output? Oh, wow. OK, that's a really interesting scan. Let's look at what we could figure out just from this, okay? So it's running OpenSSH 4.7, okay? Apache 2.2.8, um, Samba. There's a root shell running. So that's interesting. There's a root shell just there and open, and we can see it on port 1524. And then MySQL 5.4. 0.5. FT, there's an FTP server running, a VNC server, an Apache server, and a Tomcat server. Okay? So this could be a very fun server So to play with. Um, yeah, good job, Aaron. That's actually a really good argument. Because what we could do now, guys, is that we could Google these different versions that they're running. Open SSH 4.7 vulnerabilities. Because now we know exactly what version of whatever they're running is. Just, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead and Google a couple of these services and tell me if you find any vulnerabilities, let me know for this server. Okay, go ahead and Google. Let's take uh, uh, yeah. Okay, this is 
For which uh, which one are you looking up? Yeah. Okay, you could call it, how's it now, service attack? Um. Oh, okay, so there's a vulnerability for OpenSSH which uh, lets you bypass the authentication uh, uh, I don't know if it's going to work, but it's going to let you let us bypass like the remote authentication, which should get us root. We won't do that right now. We will in a few minutes. We'll, we'll try a few attacks on it. Okay, um, let's try out a few not, a few more arguments. So go back to the man page of nmap. Okay. Just scroll through. Let's see what we think we can do. Um, just we're looking at the uh, man page to see if there's any diff any cool things that we could try running. Okay, let's try the SS scan, okay? It's the TCP SYN scan. It's the default and the most popular, okay, we already did this one, it's the default one, so never mind. let's not do that one, let's look for a more intensive one, okay? Is that SX? Where? I think the best one is SS. No, I saw SX first, if you scroll back up a little bit. SN. There, there's a third one listed. Xmas scan, that's what it is. Okay. That's the one that's supposed to just light the thing up, which is why it's called Xmas scan. Okay. So triggers all the IBS things. Okay, so SX. <laughs> Let's try it, guys. Let's go ahead. Oh, wait. I think it's capital S, little x. Uh, I thought that was little x big x. No. Uh, Go back. <laughs> I should have paid attention. Okay, little less, big N. I should do it. Do I have to supply it with any? Are you sure this is it? Um, no, I just remember using SX as part of my syntax when I was learning at mapping class. Uh, it, maybe it's supposed to be combined with some other like scan flags or something. Okay, real quick. Um, Cali 
based on Debian? I think so. Okay. Just when you're picking it, it's not a big deal. Okay, so I believe we're doing Okay, T four dash A is what it's saying online. Sure. I'm gonna give give that a shot. T four dash A. Well, this should be an intent scan where we get as much information as we can out of it. There we are. Okay. Okay. So it's this command that we're going to type. Okay. Uh, here, let me let me zoom in on the screen. Sorry, it's really small. Um, zoom in. Zoom in. Zoom in. Okay. How about that? Okay. N map dash capital T four dash A dash B. So this is the kind of standard intent scan. So what it's going to, it's going to go through all the ports possible. Um, also going to do a service scan. So let's go, to, go ahead and try this one. This will be the last syntax that we try. Okay, ready? Same one that I've written down. Looks like this, T, capital T four dash A dash B, and then the script, and that should be it. Fantastic. Okay. Um, can you run the command? Okay. Perfect. Um, Okay, let's see what things we can find out about it. Okay, so the OS, it's running Unix, Samba 3.0.20, Debian, um, the computer name, um, the work group, um, system time, not very important. Um, all right, let's see what else we can find. I'm gonna scroll up, because we have a lot of information here. See different hosts. Okay, it's running Apache Coyote 1.1, Tomcat 5.5. So that looks like it's an early version. Probably exploitable. Um, VNC 3.3. This isn't as clean as the old scan that we did, but it's still helpful. Nice QL. Okay. So the next part that we want to, so we're going to get back to this host itself. But I want to try it. Let's see if we could scan the entire subnet to see what else is out there. Okay. 
All right. Because this is really helpful because you get into a, uh, a situation, uh, a job. The f if you have a job, the first thing you want to do if you, you are assigned to do network auditing or something like that, you want to figure out what's around you. Okay. So the first thing you want to do, you want to do an in-map of the entire subnet. Okay. Because you want to know exactly what's out there when you're doing auditing on a network or on your own network. Maybe you want to see what else is connected to your network. Okay, so let's go ahead, let's go look through again. There's gonna be different arguments of, uh, here for, not for the scan types, but for the, the host, type, the target's specification, okay? This is what we need right here. All right, does anybody know what the dash 24 means? So what that means is it's going to scan the entire uh, subnet, I believe. Or it will scan 256 hosts, okay, if we do dash 24. We could also do different arguments like dash 16, uh, for example, um, dash uh, 0, which is the smallest value allowed, or dash 32, which is the largest. So for now, let's go back. Okay, let's go ahead, let's do one of these older scans that we did. Uh, let's do SV, which it gave us the service names and everything. Let's also do a dash, let's put, a, let's put an O there. Uh, let's, put, let's put an O. Uh, then let's go over here to the dash 24. All right? Uh, well, actually, uh, let's do dot zero zero. Okay, let's see if this does it. All right, is it running for you guys? Yeah. Oh, you know what? Here, my bad. Uh, control C. Okay, let's do a dash uh, little b. You want to restart it if you do control C. But the dash little v, that just means it's verbose, which will, means it will tell us everything. Mine's going a little bit slow. Is yours scanning? Are you getting output? Or? Uh, yeah, it's just because it's the target. It's just around the other port. Oh, ah. Hopefully, that's going to be All right, so mine's giving you a little bit of intermittent output. With uh, those? Okay, well, fantastic. You know, I'm probably having trouble doing it just because it's on my own machine and I'm bridged, but you guys are getting all the output. Oh, there, there we go. Mine's fine, we'll go. Yeah. Nice, okay, discovered open ports. Okay. How many? 446. Does that sound about right? 246. Yeah, that's what you got too. So perfect. No, no, you're okay. Get in here. How many computers do we have in here? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13. You have like 35, and how many did you say there were? 46. 46. Ah, it's okay. It's probably these ones over here. Maybe. Servers. Hopefully we're scanning the right subnet. I assume so, because if it was uh, the other, like uh, the main one, there would be hundreds, tons of hosts. Yeah. Okay, mine's taking forever, because I'm doing a stealth scan as well, which is pointless, because I just did a huge TCP scan. But... Probably didn't give my VM enough RAM. Did your scan finish? Uh, I think so, but I'm doing something else. Oh no, yeah, we're it's gonna take a while, huh? That's at like twenty five percent. 
Okay, we probably should have just done a pink scan. Let me, okay, let's quit what we're doing, guys, because that's gonna just take forever. Yeah, I'm at 23%, we're not gonna wait. Okay, I, I believe a pink scan is a dash P. Nope, that's not it. You know what? Actually, let's just do this. Quit. Let's do in. Let's let's not use anything besides uh, dash v and end map. So lowercase v just will print out everything that's going on. Um, I'm just going to do a basic end map scan, which should be really fast. Saying so V is verbose, so it's like telling you all the little things that the scan's actually doing. Oh yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's why it's uh, being annoying. Probably didn't have to do verbose, but that way we see something on screen. Okay, again, that this is actually kind of going slow, my bad. Because again, we're, we're scanning the entire subnet, and there's 46 hosts, but it's scanning every single possible one. So let's, I'm gonna go in man, in map. Let's go ahead, let's see what the syntax is just for ping scan, nothing else. See it. Are you guys looking through the man page? Let me know if you yeah. find it. Okay, yeah. Okay, so it's dash sn, which means no no services. So isn't a ping scan, but if we do dash sn, I'm gonna do dash dash v just so I can see the output. So little sn means no port scan, which will oh. See what hosts are up. I will, it says that can't be right, can it? Maybe they've used the whole subnet. <laughs> they could have. Anyway, but so you get you get the idea. We could use dash twenty four to specify the entire subnet. We could also do different ranges of IPs. Uh, if we put a dash in between them, I will, um, we can do we can tell it where to scan. Uh, if we don't have what, if you need to find targets, it's good to scan the entire subnet to figure out what, where they are. If we, it's but this is more sloppy, you know, to scan the entire thing. It's better because it's very obvious that you're scanning the entire subnet. If I'm sitting here on Wireshark, which we'll go, we'll do a demonstration another day. I, if I'm looking at the internet traffic going through our network, uh, it's going to be very obvious when I see one IP address scanning a whole bunch of different 
ports on every single IP, okay? So if we do dash 24, it's pretty noisy, okay? But if we do just a simple scan on uh, one IP address, it's way harder to detect, okay? We could, well, we'll go into how to detect it later, but um, there's scan, doing a ping scan or a OS detect or a port, or especially like a port scan on just one host, uh, probably not gonna find it. So that's what's recommended, is find your target. But if you don't know what your target is, might as well do a scan of the entire subnet, okay? Um, okay. Um, since we already have a target and we know where it, where it is, we know some of the services that are available on it, how about we break into it, okay? So we could Google it and look for the exploit, um, which is good, um, but let's just, let's cheat, okay? Let's use the tools at our disposal with Kali Linux, okay? So let's go ahead and use uh, Armitage, okay? And let's, uh, which is going to utilize okay um, it'll utilize Metasploit okay so on your Kali Linux machine there's actually a little icon right here that's for our, our Armitage okay but we have to run a few commands first before oh come on before it uh, lets us okay um, okay so open up a new terminal or yeah, a new terminal would be good. Okay, so type in service host gress gr ql start. I'm gonna write this down. Sure, yeah, go ahead and write that down. Okay. This is a prerequisite uh, for uh, Armitage. Okay. I should, I think I typed that in right, and just, Yep, that's it. Okay, ready? And then, uh, I'll wait for you guys to get that. Okay, now we're gonna, we have to do one more thing. Um, so you're asking what that does? What? Starting the SQL server? All right, somebody asked me. Okay, yeah. so that's a prerequisite for our Armitage. So um, it's a little bit annoying, but Kali Linux by default can't run Armitage. Okay, you have to start a few services that don't start by default for different reasons. Um, I don't know exactly. Um, I assume this is, a, it runs SQL. It's just a prerequisite service for it to run. I don't know exactly what it is, but so I just, I, it's, these are good to memorize. Okay, then the other one is msfdb, I believe. Start, let me just verify that's how you spell it. Okay. Yep. Um, actually, it's not start, it's init. So this is actually going to start the, uh, you, you only have to do this one, I believe, once. If you, but if you have a live boot, then you'll have to do it every time. So this is starting the Metasploit service, okay? Which is what, so try that. Mine says it's already configured, because it is. Okay. That's your output. You're good. Yep. So that should, that should create the, your da the database that you need. And then, the last thing you need to do Type in Armitage, or Armitage, okay? We all good? So you can look these two up. Um, just look at how to start uh, Armitage on Kali Linux, and it's the first thing that comes up um, if you need help. So just type in, okay, good. So we typed in Armitage. Okay, so this window's gonna come up. Don't change anything, 
Okay, this is already configured to what it should be for your host. Click connect. And then, do you want to start a Metasploit RPC server? Yes. That's what we just configured. Okay, so now we're starting it. You're going to get an error that says connection refused. Don't worry about that. Um, so what happened is that it, it tried, um, the first thing it did just didn't work, and it's not set to verbose, so it's not going to print out everything. That's how it is. Um, if you look here on the window, you can see it starting out. We're good. Um, does everybody have it starting? Yeah. Okay. How's your Kali Linux? Is it working? Okay. Oh, you're doing not a live boot. You're doing a. We're downloading the live boot while simultaneously installing ISO to. Uh, okay. Sure. Here we go. I am, I am loaded. Are you guys loaded in? Okay. okay. Are you, uh, is Armitage up for you yet? Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and get started. So these are actually things that I left over from uh, the CTF challenge. Okay, these are three hosts that I was uh, attacking. Is that my those might be your IP addresses, actually, Aaron. Uh, no, they're not. I'll just mess around. We should do a disclaimer about how dangerous this tool is. <laughs> okay, yes. Disclaimer. This tool can cause chaos. And if you don't know how to use it, it's very sloppy. And if you use this on the wrong subnet, even on accident, you can get in big trouble. Good show. And like, federal all laws trouble with the government institution. So don't, yeah, don't so. We are on the 172 subnet. Is that isolated from the rest of the users? I believe the okay. break. I was wondering why it wasn't a 161, because yeah. that's what everything else is. Yeah, exactly. So the 172, that's why it's different from the rest of the building, is because it's its own subnet. OK? No, of course not. And so in, in this case, we're not going to, uh, so there's different things we could do for this, like host discovery. But we already know what our host is, OK? So we're going to go to host, then add host, OK? So it says enter one per line. We know what our host is that we want to look at. So it's 172.16.50.35, which is our um, vulnerable server that we set up. Okay. So now it's here, this little computer icon. Super simple. We can do it different ways, but I'm just going to right click it and do a scan. That's going to do a basic uh, in-map scan, just like we did. But if we if we look at what it's doing, it said um, right click it and then click scan. Okay, so it's doing a basic in map scan, but it's also doing an OS detect for us. Okay, so it's doing in map, the name, then also dash O. Right? Look. Yeah, I had a print charger. We're fine. Yeah? Okay. You got it? Okay. Great. Three scans to go. All right. So what this scan is doing, uh, Armitage is really nice in that it combines Nmap and Metasploit, which are two tools that are very powerful. You should know how to use them individually. But this is a really convenient tool, and it shows it to you in a way that's very easy to understand. Okay. So scan completed. All right. So now we want to right click on it and click services. Okay. Look at that. Remember all this information that we got from Inmap? Now it's in a nice table for us. The host, the file, the name of the service, the protocol, then more information about it. Okay. Like what version it's running. This is perfect. Okay. 
You can actually use this program because it does utilize Nmap. Let me show you a couple other features that it has. I could go to host and then I could do Nmap scan. So look, we have the intent scan that we tried to run right here. We have the ping scan, we have the quick scan, and then the quick scan OS detect, which is by default what this does, okay? Which, which is what I recommend. Because I would recommend the, the best scan to do is a quick scan with OS detect, which is essentially Nmap dash O, okay? does the basic nmap scan, you know, does the ports, and it does an OS detect. But if you really want to do a, a better one, I think it's, what's the one that shows you the service name? It's S. It was SV, dash yeah. SV. Yeah, dash SV is also really important. So I say dash SV, dash O, and I think you're good. Because you're doing an OS detect, you're also doing the names of the services, which is really important to know, okay? So yes, you can use this, but I would say it's way better to learn how to actually use Nmap from the command line, which is why we didn't teach you how to use this first, okay? Uh, we are gonna go into Metasploit later, but in the, that's a little bit more complicated, so for now, we're gonna just use our image, okay? Um, okay, to wrap it up, let's, so we know that this machine is vulnerable, okay? So as a team, we're gonna to work together to figure out what we're going to exploit to gain access to escalate our privileges on this machine, okay? So go to the attacks tab up here, click on find attacks. Don't click on Hail Mary, click find attacks, okay? Don't click Hail Mary. So it's looking for exploits? Yeah, so what it's doing, it's querying the exploits that are possible for it, okay? So since we did a scan, we know it's running Unix, okay? It's running Linux, okay? Um, and so it's gonna, it knows to run just Linux exploits on it. Also, it's gonna look through the, this list that we already have conveniently here, which is why I love Armitage, because it links the information you gain from Nmap with Metasploit. So it knows the different ports that are open, the different services that are running, and also the different names. It doesn't have to have the names, but it's looking at the names to give us different exploits that could possibly work. Okay, now when you right click it, we should see an attack tab, okay? Okay, so we could see FTP, HTTP, IRC, Postgres, real service handle. So these are things that things that's running, okay? So what are, which one should we try first? Um, we know that it's running OpenSSH, okay. So go to SSH, click on check exploits. Okay, keep an eye out for if anything does support the check. Okay, no. It's all right. Let's go through different ones, guys. Uh, FTP, just uh, go through different ones. Click on check exploits, and let's see if anything comes up saying that it is exploitable. Okay. Okay. I didn't see anything show up that said it was. I know I did set up a few things that are very vulnerable on it. Yeah, go ahead and go through all of them, do check and see if anything comes up with the check. The check is not guaranteed to catch the vulnerability, but it's a good way to, to figure out what it is, okay? So, um, what, what is, where did you find one? On the uh, Samba server. Okay, so go to attack, Samba, okay.
Wait, I, mine says it does not support the chat. Does yours say it does? It says it does on yours back there? Or yeah. Which one? Which exploit? User map? Uh, trends to open? Oh, okay, okay, there. So right click, attack, mid miscellaneous, check exploits. Okay, there we are. Check target is vulnerable to, here, I'm gonna scroll back up. Let's take a look at it. <laughs> okay, mine's still scanning, one second. Yeah, a green plus sign, uh, let's see. Okay, so we have a few other ones. Okay, so we're gonna start with this one, okay? The, the DISTCC executable, are you ready? Attack, miscellaneous, this one. Okay, click that. Okay, let's launch that. No, uh, it, it should be by default. It's got taking information by, from our in-map scan and plug it into the attack. Can I see? Okay. Uh, mine's taking a little while. Okay, so your, your host turned red in your list. How about you? Yeah, there you are. Okay. Mine's not yet. It's weird. So that means it's compromised? Okay, if it turns red around it, you see the little red lightning? That means yes. Um, okay, I wanna catch up to where you guys are, so. I'm just gonna run a Hail Mary, and it's gonna do everything it can. It's gonna run every single attack possible. Never do this, ever, 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 at anything that you don't own, like any subnet, because this will show up in a heartbeat, okay? Because I'm literally just, <laughs> yeah, it's like I'm throwing rocks at a bank. Like they're gonna find out that I'm breaking in, okay? I'm throwing, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm, it's like I'm doing a drive-by on a bank with a with an airsoft gun or something like it's not gonna anyway well not an airsoft gun is it more like a yeah more like a mini gun like they're gonna figure out something's going on um, so you, we did do an exploit so I, you figured out how we can do it right we did check ex, we did attacks and it scanned what ones were viable and then we did check exploits and it specifically went in and checked the version and see if it's stuck. Check the version of the service and saw if it was th exploitable through that attack. Okay. Okay, it's going to take a, just a second longer. Okay. So if we were to like attack something like Windows Ten, would we not be able to find anything? What? what? Um, if you're going to attack Windows Ten, chances are you won't find anything. I'll be honest. Chances are you won't. But if they haven't went, went in and installed different softwares, you could. Yeah. So just a plain install of Windows 10, I would, I would say your chances are little to none. Okay. But if they've gone in and started installing different programs, especially out of date ones, you could. Okay. My battery is really low, but hopefully you should be able to get a shell in time because I didn't bring. I don't, I don't I'm done. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Oh, you know what? I'm having trouble because I'm on the same host as my computer, so it's confused. But you guys gained access, okay? So when it turns red, that means you have a shell, okay? So I'm just gonna walk around to you. Unfortunately, I can't put it on the screen. Okay, which means essentially, watch. Now if you right click on the host, 
you're going to see new options. Shell. You can interact. If you click on interact, guess what? What does that say? Uh, go, so right click it and go to interact. Shell 2, interact. Has an item config. Where are you? All right, so that what that means, so you, remember I taught you what SSH is, right? You, you need to get a secure shell. Well, this is a shell to that machine, and you didn't have any passwords or anything to get it. So you type in I've config, look at that. That's where you are. So, so you could explore. Stuff inside of it. Sure, you could explore and do different things. Now, there's so many different, um, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up, but there's so many different host exploit modules installed with Armitage, okay? Um, there, okay, it's getting my laptop stuffy. So, there's a ton of different post exploitation modules that we could run with Armitage or Metasploit, okay? Or I should, I should say Metasploit. Armitage is just kind of our graphical interface. That makes it easy. Um, so different, some different post uh, modules include um, a key logger. You could log the keyboard strokes, which is very valuable in gaining uh, different administrators' passwords so you can get back in. So you could do a key logger. You could uh, pass, you could create a program which is a backdoor very easily. You could pass to your session, which is one of the first things you want to do. Once you gain access, you want to pass it to a new service, and you you could change the number of that service. So you could change it to something that they won't suspect, because it's very easy to find your shell uh, from the default. Okay, so you want to pass that to a different shell. Okay, so then you essentially have two shells. So that way, even if they kill one, you still have another one open, which will buy you a lot of time. Exactly. So you can do backdoors, key loggers. If they're running a Windows machine box. You could do really scary stuff. You could take screenshots of their webcam. You could take screenshots of their screen. Okay? And you could have those refreshing every few seconds. Okay? So the same solution. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I'm totally going to teach you guys how to do that. Uh, and we're we'll probably just going to have a pure Metasploit meeting uh, next month, or next semester, I should say. Um, Okay, let me think. Some other post exploitation modules, you can uh, dump files. You could kill the machine, actually, which is, there's, I don't know why they have a post module that will create infinite like directories within themselves and it, to kill the, yeah, just to kill everything. Um, other things include, yeah, you would gain for, it. once you get in, there's different post modules which will help you know what is actually on the system. You could look at installed applications. You could look at different users that are there. I mean, once you're in there with a shell, you essentially own it. Uh, you just have to know what to do once you're in to be effective. Um, all right, any questions about Metasploit or Armitage or Inmap up to this point? Okay, how do we know when this stuff is happening to our own computer? Okay, that's a really good question. Um, so I wish this was still running, but if I typed in the top command just on my, on my box, which will show me my, it's like the uh, process explorer, it will show these different shells right there. Th th yeah, they'll be, they'll be open and I can see them. Uh, so if, if we're compromised, what would some of the shells be? Sorry, I'm just um, I don't. I don't remember them off the top of my head. The different shells that could be running, um, but they could be. That you should know your. The first thing that you should do is that in cybersecurity, you should know the good from the evil on these systems, especially Windows systems. You should know what processes should be there and what which, which ones shouldn't, because it's hard to just pick one out. Okay, this one's bad. So you need to be able to go through and memorize the names of. Of especially like kind of Windows box, there's different services that start by default, and if you think that's a bad one, you kill it. It could kill your system, and you have to reboot it. So, 
what I would say is just learn your system, whether that be Linux, whether that be Windows, and learn what environment it is. Should it have Telnet open? Should it have Apache open? Okay. Now, if you want to know if somebody's in your system and doing all these things, the best thing you can do is look at the logs. Okay. There's administrative logs set on by default most of the time by these things. Um, Linux is so easy. I think you can go to vo dash var dash logs, and there'll be tons of logs there. You just have to learn how to grep through them. Look for different things that uh, shouldn't be happening. Um, the problem is you just have to know when to look at those logs. And you're not gonna always gonna look at the logs, but if there's different processes that are open, that's weird, uh, different ports that are open, um, if you have a security program and it's mentioning anything, go check the logs. See what changes have been made to your system. Now, if somebody's been in your system and running these post exploits, I would say first thing you should do is take it offline. Just take out the network card, or not the network card, the, the cable, or turn off the Wi-Fi, whatever, so that way they, whatever they're doing is stopped. Next thing you should do, if you have a good situation, is you would be able to wipe it and restore to an old backup from before it was exploited, or you hope before it was exploited. Because once somebody gets post uh, access to your machine, you have no idea what they could have been doing. I mean, they could have put in 100 back doors. They could have opened, changed different configs and different fi system files that will allow them to exploit your system in the future. So the best thing you could do is once you find out somebody's in your system is wipe it and reboot. I mean, that's what I would do personally. If not, go through the logs and undo everything that they did. Just hope you don't miss anything. Or once you become a security ninja, take their tunnel and go right back down it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you can do that. Uh, I'll show you. I'll show you a YouTube video of somebody who's done that, where a, a hacker, like one of those India telemarketers, you know, got in them and held them for, held them for ransom. Well, he got into his machine uh, just as easily. Was it Jose's? Yeah, Fosse is funny. I, I don't know if you've seen that comedian, but he did. He does hacking, but like as a comedian, oh. um, it's on YouTube. Like he does other comedians' skits, but he does hacking thing and things as well. So he got hacked, and then he hacked this guy back. And on his desktop were pictures of his girlfriend, and pictures of him, and he sent those right back and said, "I know who you are, so and so." And yeah, anyway. Yeah. Yeah, Farage or whatever his name was. Okay. So yes, you can get back through the tunnel. I don't know how, but I would like to find out. Um, I think that's about it for our meeting. Um, yep, I have one percent battery, so good time. Um, so today, today we learned the basics of Nmap and also the program Armitage, which uses Metasploit. So I would recommend looking into Metasploit on your free time and different ways you can use that from the command line. Um, it's a little bit more, it's way more complicated than Armitage, but I really don't want you guys to be reliant on Armitage. It is a nice program to use, and a lot of people at CTF just fired this up into the Hail Mary and got into a lot of machines. That's what I did. I mean, when it comes down to it, you want to use every tool that you have at, you know, that's available to you, but it's better if you know how those tools are actually working, because you'll be much more effective. Okay, um, are there any more questions? Oh, I need this. Oh, you're about to applause. <laughs> encore, encore. All right, thank you everybody for coming.